Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome back to another episode of my shitty book review channel, where I review really good books shittily. It's not that I don't try to do a good job, but I admit I'm just a guy sitting in front of his computer with a nice microphone that my fiance was nice enough to buy me. Speaking of really good books reviewed shittily, today I'm going to review If I Was Your Girl, written by Meredith Russo, or Russo, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it going to give you a little bit of history about this book, but first, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee while you suffer through my shitty intro. Here we go! Alright, so I hope you enjoyed my shitty intro. Not very good editing quality on this channel, but hey, that music is legit. It comes from a band I used to play in a long time ago called Coffee Incorporated. We had a lot of fun. I was the drummer, but... Times change, now I'm more of a, a writer than a musician. Anyways, with that said, I'd like to get right into this book. The reason I decided to pick this one up, I picked up If I Was Your Girl, along with Transition Baby, two books about life as a transgender person, because I am currently just about finished. I'm on the final chapter of the fourth draft of my, my book. It's about... A straight guy, a cis person, I learned through reading this book. It's a, a cis person who ends up falling in love with a transgendered woman and he's doing a lot of soul searching with his family, with his friends. There's a lot of drama in between it, but I wanted to make sure I got the transgender character right. And also, I've been learning a lot about comp titles since I'm trying to find a literary agent. Comp titles are something important. So my fiance and I went to go grab coffees over at Barnes & Noble. They have a nice Starbucks in there and... We like to search around and find good books to read. And I wanted to find two books that I can compare my book to. In my search, I did come across these two books, and I, I got help from the wonderful employees there. They really are the underrated heroes of the book industry, is the salespeople at bookstores. I couldn't find anything to do with an actual cis person, a straight male who falls in love with a transgender person so nothing was told in the straight person's point of view in dealing with this community but these these two books were the closest thing that this kind salesperson was help able to help me find that worked with my genre and this one in particular actually deals with some of the same things that the character in this book grant who fell in love with our character amanda in this book he kind of goes through some of the same things that my main character and my novel go through. So it was a perfect, perfect suggestion from her, and I'm grateful for it. So enough about my book. Let's let's talk about this wonderful book. And I want to go to the end in a note from the author really quick where she says, To my cisgender readers, which I am. I'm a cisgender reader. Which is to say, to those of you who are not trans, thank you for reading this. You're welcome. Thank you for being interested. Again, you're welcome. Thank you for writing the book, and thank you for educating me a little bit. It's not exactly a topic I'm very well versed with, and considering everything that's going on in today's news and in society, I needed to understand this community a little bit better. So I'm grateful that someone wrote an easy, fun-to-read book that actually helped me grasp what some of these folks might be going through. She continues to write, I'm nervous about what you might think of this book, though maybe not in the way you might think. I am, of course anxious that people might not like it. But even more than that, I'm worried that you might take Amanda's story as gospel, especially since it comes from a trans woman. No, of course I don't take it as gospel because uh, I'm fairly certain you took a lot of artistic liberty in writing this book, but since, since the writer, Meredith Russo, is a transgendered person herself, she can only speak for her experience and the experience from the fictional character she developed in her head. Of course, we're all different. Eight billion different personalities in this world. I mean, eight billion different opinions. You know, it's it's going to be very difficult to try to relate to every single person or to try to see, okay, this is one person's experience, so that's everybody's experience. That's not the case. Unfortunately, there might be some issues out there where there's still a few individuals that might think, well, this is the way the world should be, and if anyone disagrees with me, then they're the enemy. That's just not... That's not realistic, but fortunately those folks are far and few between. I try not to look into too much news, too much of the 
the the biased media you might find on YouTube or on any social media is because I don't believe that people who are angry with straight people or straight people who are angry with transgendered folks are the majority at all. I actually don't know any of them in my own life, so I see them as the fringe minority, therefore I'm not worried about them, I'm not worried about their opinions becoming commonplace. However, it is a money grab when when folks like to make channels on YouTube which exposes these fringe folks, and unfortunately people make the mistake of thinking they're the majority when they flat out are not. The majority of us do want a good story. We want to be able to identify with these folks in a way that makes us better able to understand their story. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to read this book by Meredith Root. So, number one, it helped me in my own writing career, which again, Meredith, thank you. That's one of the main reasons I read is because I want a good story. I want to better understand the world and the people around me. And in this case, I also want to improve my writing, especially in my understanding of this community. And this book was a perfect example of of just great storytelling, characterization, drama. It was it was a story about about growth, more or less. Amanda's mother was way more accepting of her son's transition. So she was born a daughter, but unfortunately she was born in a boy's body. The father was not so accepting. It took him a long time to come around. So it was really cool how she tied it all up at the end. She ended up moving to her father's neighborhood because her parents went through a divorce over this transition. And when she moved to the new neighborhood, she didn't want to tell anybody who she was. She wanted a fresh start. And in doing so, she met this wonderful boy named Grant. Like, would this guy really still love her if 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 Grant knew who she who she was, that she'd been hiding the secret, that she used to be Andrew instead of Amanda? And a, a whole bunch of drama takes place that makes that actually happen. She went to go tell him once upon a time, so spoiler alert, she wrote it all down, put it in an envelope, and went to present it to him. He lit it on fire. And I thought that was a wonderful moment. He didn't care about her past. He loved her. And I think when you're able to look past labels, when you're able to look past, you know, if you don't know anything about a person and you just meet them, and you don't understand their past at all, you're going to see them as the person they are now. And it's just easier to relate to them and understand them and love them. But of course, when he did find out, which was inevitable, you knew it was going to happen because it's a great work of fiction. You know, you want a well-rounded tale. So he did find out. And the way that, that Meredith presented the whole thing, there was, of course, that, that fringe group in the book. There was this one fringe guy in the book who didn't understand it at all. And um, she did a good job, her and her friends, of facing this enemy and and overcoming the challenge of this one lunatic individual who not only seemed to have a bad grip on how he saw transgendered folks, but gay people as well as women in general. So this guy had a lot of work he needs to do on himself, which, if I'm going to be completely honest... That was one of the two things I kind of didn't like about the book, because when it ended, I wanted so much more of Amanda's story. And it, that was why it was a great book, because it ended and I wanted it to continue. But I wanted this, this Parker dude, this guy that had a horrible vision on what a transgender person is, homosexuals are, and what women in general, general are. He was just, he had a lot of work. And I wanted to see him get his comeuppance more than he did. And there was all this, also this other character named B, who Amanda had trusted and told the truth about her past to, and it turned out that was a mistake, which was awful, considering it was really nice for Amanda to finally have someone to talk to and tell the truth to, to get that off her chest. And then this girl goes and exposes her in a drunken moment of weakness, and it pushes Amanda right back into that place of absolute stress, like, how am I ever going to trust anybody again? if every single time I open up to somebody they turn into a backstabber. So I wanted to see more happen to be and we don't even know what came of it. We have no idea if this friendship came back. We have no idea if B ever realized the error of her ways. And the thing that was really interesting about that was B was also a member of the LGBT community as a bisexual girl. So it's very interesting because it's it's like that community 
it can be very relatable for the rest of us too because you really you got to be careful out there i mean your own friends could be out to hurt you in the future you know and the, the more you tell them the truth and expose yourself if you have a problem in the future that's more ammo they have to attack you later on if they're a bad person and you'd think that this community would be a little more united because they're all fighting the same cause but it turns out they're just as human as the rest of us and this girl b i want to see more come out of her but they weren't really the story they weren't that's that's why it was such a beautiful book you know i wanted those two those two things to come up at the end but they didn't however it was all about our main character amanda growing as a character throughout this entire book and her relationship with her friends with the boys she fell in love with and with her parents in my opinion she became just such a beautiful well-rounded little adult and it was a wonderful ya tale and I just loved it. I loved her. I loved the community and the support group around her. I loved her parents. There was hardly a person in this book I didn't like except for the two people I already mentioned. I wished we could have seen a little more of what happened to them because I wanted bad things to happen to them because she did, Meredith did a great job of painting a really negative picture of these folks. But she also, I, in my opinion, wanted to make a beautiful book. So she focused on the beauty instead of the negativity, which... I should be applauding more than I am. So all in all, I mean, this is a five-star book as far as I'm concerned. And I'm, I'm delighted about it because it gave me so much more understanding for my own writing. And I think I'm coming at it from a better viewpoint now. And I also feel a little more confident going into the fifth draft and, and making it a much stronger novel that hopefully will get me a literary agent finally. So again, thank you, Meredith Russo. I did love your book. And, you know, as much as I know you might have feared what some of us cis people might have thought about your book well know that not all of us are going to agree with you or love you but i do i think it was great i don't know you but from your writing i can honestly believe you're a beautiful person and you know how to spin a damn good tale as a writer and a reader myself i value that quite a bit so thank you all right, with that said, you guys could have tuned into any book review channel on YouTube. If for some reason you decide to click on mine, I appreciate you for it. Take care now.